From the Whitney to the Guggenheim and the Met, Jeff Koon's work is at most of the major art institutions, making the man and his creations contemporary classics. He's in such high demand that his 10-foot-tall balloon dog sold for $58 million at auction. It set the record for the most expensive work sold by a living artist. The genius is in his technique, but he told me he discovered his talent in a very simple way. Do you remember when you were first drawn to art, uh, when you first thought, I, I want to be an artist? You know, I do. <laughs> and it, it's kind of funny, John, because uh, I was around three. And I remember sitting at a desk and uh, making a, a drawing. And I think it was probably like a swordfish jumping up out of the water. And I remember both my parents coming up behind me and saying, you know, Jeff, that's really, that's kind of really special. That's really nice. You can draw. And finally, I had something, uh, art, that gave me a sense of self. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it could become. But art was uh, something that gave me an identity. Jeff Kuhn's career has been nothing short of extraordinary. His meteoric rise in the art world began in the 1980s, surrounded by people like Andy Warhol, Keith Haring, and Jean-Michel Basquiat. Take me back to the 80s and the art scene in New York. What was it like? I think it was like this. I think it was like it's this. It's the same. I think it's like this room right now. I think this is very metaphysical work. I think that my work in the 80s was quite metaphysical. You know, I was part of my own generation. I was growing up. Uh, we're all trying to think about what our shared interests are and then going out and making these uh, uh, kind of gestures of what we think, you know, art should be or what it can be. Where do you get your inspiration? Uh, the everyday uh, world, you know, the world around me. And, you know, John, uh, you know, I've thought about it a lot over the years. It's the, the only place that you can get your inspiration is to trust in yourself and uh, to follow your interests. Kuhn's work is unique and innovative. He puts no boundaries on his creations, from a sculpture of Michael Jackson to painting colorful tulips on a canvas to converting a pipe organ into the Hulk. For the number of critics who praise Kuhn's, an equal number have dismissed his work. He's been sued several times for copyright infringement, most recently in December of 2015. The court case is still ongoing, and the Coons camp has not responded when asked for a comment. In 1992, he lost a case over copying a photographer's image in his sculpture, String of Puppies. The original image is on the left, and Coons' sculpture is on the right. Do you read critics? Do you like to read what they have to say about your work? You know, I try not to be naive about, uh, you know, the perception of my uh, work in the world. But um, you have to always strive to lead people. And I always try to inform people, at least the context that I see the work, and I try to have the work always performing in that arena. In 2013, pop star Lady Gaga introduced Coons to a younger generation of fans. He designed the cover for her best-selling album, Art Pop, and she also featured him in her song, Applause. How did Lady Gaga get a Jeff Koontz ball on her album? Well, uh, she asked me a couple years uh, ago if I would be interested in creating an album cover for her, and it was around the time that I was thinking about uh, working with the gazing ball, and I had already had actually created some sculptures of the gazing ball. Today, Coons is overseeing an exhibition at New York's Gagosian Gallery. His gazing balls can be seen on display in front of recreations of the world's most iconic portraits. I gotta say, I'm drawn to the reflection. It's, re it's very interesting. I mean, I see the painting, but you, you, I, didn't, I hadn't seen it from the ball this up close with light behind it and that sort of thing. It's amazing. You know, this is informing you that uh, this is about you. This experience that's what you is... what said, and suddenly but, I'm looking at yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it's about... This is something that's so accessible. It's a gazing ball. It's a lawn ornament. But at the same time, it becomes so vast. It becomes the universe. The real question is how you chose the paintings that you wanted to use in this exhibit. 
you know, uh, John, this isn't, you know, the canon of art history of kind of Western art, but uh, these are just artists that I enjoy their work a lot. And if you look at their work, there are different references that everybody's making with each other. As a young man, Kuhn's revered Spanish surrealist Salvador Dali. But today, a whole new generation of young artists is looking up to Kuhn's as an inspiration. You had great success. What do you tell, what do you tell young artists? First of all, if, if I can do it, they can do it. You know, I, I come from a really, uh, you know, uh, average background. I, I had a public education. Uh, at a certain point in my life, I realized that uh, I had interest in more, that I wanted to participate more as a human being within, you know, my generation. So I think I really became self-educated. And I embraced life around me. I wanted to be part of a group. I wanted to be part of the avant-garde. And then within my work, to the best of my ability, to lead, to set an example first for my children and then for the community. It's really great to uh, meet you and to talk with you and to have you share your thoughts about your work and your life. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you.